Hey, everybody. I'm Tyler Suters with the Consumer Technology Association. We are the owners and producers of CES, the largest, the most influential tech event on the planet. We are here to get you CES ready. So the dates for the next big show, ready to jot this down? January 7th through the 10th, 2020 in Las Vegas, as always. And today, look at how technology is changing our lives for the better. And this is not just helping us be happier and healthier or making our lives more convenient. This is in many ways either making us smarter or helping us prepare to learn more as we progress in life. We are talking education technology. First of all, the cutting edge startup called Royby. We are speaking with founder and CEO of this investor-backed robotics company that has a clear focus on early childhood education. And it's an interesting approach, which yes, technology is helping our children learn, but part of that methodology is using technology that kids find so cool, right? Robotics. That conversation is coming up. Also, a deep dive into new research from the Consumer Technology Association about ed tech. That is all on this edition of CES Tech Talk. Elnaz Saraf is CEO and founder of Royby, a company that combines robotics, but also the education sector. A very interesting concept. And Elnaz, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you. It's amazing to be speaking with you today. Thank you. So a bit of an odd combination there, robotics and education. Uh, but your business premise and your goals bring it all together in such smart, sharp synergy. Take us through that story about the development of the company. Thank you. Um, you know, it's it's always uh, very, very interesting when you want to create a new concept and to see, you know, how you can really help your audience. And that's how we, we started Royby. A little over two years ago, um, my team and I came together and decided to, to make a difference, a change in the education sector. Not because, uh, you know, education is very personal to me, but also when you look at the educational system, and the way our, our children are being taught at school or even at home, you see that still there is a huge gap when it comes to early childhood education. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of attention, different sorts of product and technologies in higher education, but um, it seems like that the early childhood education is missing a lot of uh, attention. And it is a very, very critical time for all children to, to get their skills as they grow up because especially children learn through natural conversations at early age and it is important that they get relevant and really good education when they are um, still little. So after a lot of back and forth, um, you know, we, we realized that we can have a huge impact in this category. And uh, it is time to bring all the technology advancements that we have available today to this sector. And that's how we started Royby. And the reason we, we have a combination of education and robotics is that we, we want to personalize education. And to do that, we wanted to create a special platform, a tool for kids to have fun and interact with our product. And uh, we, we realized that putting our technology in, in a fun, cute, and uh, you know, interactive robot can create a lot of traction. Uh, as we know, kids really like to play with, with robots. And also, one other mission that we have is to really take kids off of large displays because it's, it's really not good for them. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that, that one aspect is the educational benefit and that theoretically we or perhaps our, our parents when we're, when we're of that young, young age um, want to do what's good for us, but... Royby also incorporates the robotics aspect, it sounds like, Elnaz, because it is such a potential appeal to children that they'll want to do this because it's fun, right? Isn't that a, a critical value yeah. add here? 
Yes, absolutely. You know, we've done a lot of research and we can see that kids really like when, when it comes to robots, they, they love to interact with it and um, they, they think, you know, it's not a human, it's a toy, it's like a companion, like a friend. And um, based on the, the research and the surveys that we've got, we've seen 10%, about 10% increase in the, the interaction and learning care when kids actually interacted with the robot. Mm -hmm. um, how did you come up with this particular application of the technology? Is it more from an educational aspect is, or is it more about understanding the capabilities and potential that robotics can offer in this field? It is more of a combination, you know. Uh, when we when we wanted to create Roybe as uh, a very advanced robot, we realized that there there are still a lot of limitations. To give you an example, is um, you know Roybe has voice recognition and it detects what kids say. But at the same time, AI is not mature enough for, for the age range, three to seven, that we are focusing on. Mm -hmm. And we, we had to make sure, you know, when we, we are creating the educational content for, for Roybe and using the advancements in technology, we, we had to make sure these matches. So even now, even though we are using uh, available technology in, for example, voice recognition, we still need to work on our own algorithm to collect enough data to recognize what kids say because there, there are a lot of variations. For example, yellow, bellow, rabbit, rabbit, they, they, they say things differently. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure only a yeah, percentage so, of kids. Yeah, we have that, a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, only a percentage of kids that age, I'm sure, can even pronounce their R's, right? Yes, so, yes. yeah, there are variables there. <laughs> what about your perspective, Elnaz, as a, as a CEO and founder? Uh, on the educational technology sector in general right now. I mean, you're right there at the bleeding edge of, of what's happening right now. Uh, give us a bit of a forecast or your vision for the next five to 10 years in this sector. Uh, what we can see today is, of course, the, the education sector really needs a huge change. And the, the way we want this change to happen is that we, we want to make sure with the mission that we have uh, we would be able, to, within the five uh, years or so, we would be able to really help children to get personalized education. Because right now, still our kids get educated in pretty much the same way. Everybody gets the same sort of assessments through standards, norms, and we really want to change that with Roy And that's a big mission. Uh -huh. uh, it's going to be a lot of work, but step by step, we, we want to start this change at home because changing the whole education system is going to take uh, much longer. And we are starting at homes, uh, providing this personalized education. And in, in the next five years or so, we really want to have a global impact on, on the education system, giving children the chance they deserve to, to get educated based on their own abilities. So basically, even kids that we maybe label as uh, you know, having disabilities, mm -hmm. maybe that doesn't even exist because every child has a unique sets of abilities. Mm -hmm. And that's we want, what we want to do. So what is the biggest challenge to that growth, to that uh, element of the sector fulfilling its its potential as, as tech changing our lives for the better, Elnaz? Um, I would say different sorts of challenges. Um, some would relate to, to technology, you know, still, again, we, we have some limitations when it comes to resource, data, and then capabilities of the technology today, which I'm sure everything is going to get better and better over time. Then um, other challenge would be, you know, uh, a lot on, on the privacy uh, factor. Mm -hmm. we, we collect data. We are in the business of changing the experience, the educational experience. But when it comes to collecting data, everybody is so sensitive, including government, parents, and um, a lot of different people. 
And we hope to to change this by uh, giving more trust to to our users, and then gradually. Uh, even teachers and government entities to know that our mission is to impact education. And of course, when you are in the stage of growth, as we are, um, we, we have limited resource and we need to move things really fast. And hopefully, uh, you know, we, I, I always joke that I wish I, I didn't even have to sleep <laughs> because there is, there is a lot of great things we can do, but the time is limited, the resource is limited. So it's going to take some time to, to expand. Yeah, spoken like a true founder, El Naz. That is, <laughs> that is spot on message. Um, that also sounds a bit like uh, how you feel, the excitement, the anticipation. Um, around CES. Uh, what is your approach, the experience you've had um, as a founder going to the stage at, at, at CES and interacting with so many potential partners when you're trying to, to grow your company exponentially? I think uh, CES is, is absolutely amazing. I've been going to, to CES for the past six years, so I've been, been pretty involved. And what I see is CES has become like an event that you you can meet so many people, even for us especially, a lot of our partners and the people we work with, they are all over the, the globe and mm-hmm. gives us the opportunity to meet with our partners, potential customers, get a lot of press coverage. Uh, we, we also have a lot of benefits as being the, the member of CTA. So for example, last year, uh, we were able to, to go to the meeting rooms, have private meetings because you know CS is uh, crazy in terms of amount of people that they, they come talk with you. So it, um, C- CES and in, in general, CTA um, has, has given us really good opportunity to, to talk more uh, and create brand awareness in, in regards to Roybe. Mm-hmm. What about 2020 when you're looking ahead and without giving away any particulars about your strategy, uh, the general strategic approach, how you make the most of your time, uh, the most of your opportunity, therefore, you know, over the course of a week in, in Las Vegas in January? Uh, when we go to, to see yes, this year, this coming year, our primary focus would be, first of all, to, to have a really big announcement about <laughs> Roybee because it's, uh, it's the time that truly Roybee launches to the market. And um, the best, best way of doing it would be CES. And we, we are already working on uh, having press conferences before and after and during that uh, CES time. Mm -hmm. And also focusing on um, finding the right partners who can help us to grow Roybe in many different regions. So that would be our next step as we uh, we are at a stage to to grow our technology into different places. Mm -hmm. Um, What has you most excited for the year ahead? Or heck, we can make that the six months ahead. <laughs> um, what is it in tech? You know, at Roybe, we go day by day. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, something new happens, something exciting. <laughs> it doesn't matter how little or big it is. It's just anything that happens is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, take us through the end of the year then. What is it about uh, education technology that, that really has your eye and attention right now? Um, right now, our, our big focus is to to launch Roybe um, this year to to bring it to to the market, and uh, we we want to have a small batch in terms of piloting, especially mm-hmm. with with kindergartens. And one of the reasons we want to do that is gradually we we want to have our impact in um, in the education system through the schools, and the best way to do it is to start a small scale. Um, uh, like a pilot test and being able to actually uh, work side by side with teachers, getting their feedback to see how we can make our technology better. And, and that's the, the focus we're going to have um, this year to, to launch the market, but also pilot with, with schools. 
You can hear the passion, the enthusiasm, <laughs> maybe the fatigue of founder and CEO Elnaz Saraf of Royby Robot. Elnaz, a pleasure to have you with us. I know your time is, is very much in demand right now, but congratulations on your success so far. And we'll see you in just a few months in Las Vegas at CES. Thank you so much. It is really exciting to, to speak with you and the opportunity. Thank you. Joining me now in the CTA studio is CTA's own Director of Research, Leslie Rohrbaugh. Leslie, great to have you with us. Oh, thanks for having me. I know you do a lot of road trips for work, so I'm glad to have you at home in D.C. for at least a few minutes. Yeah, I'm liking it too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, education and technology going hand in hand more and more frequently in the classroom, but it sounds like more and more in the minds of parents and educators as well, based on CTA's latest research. Yeah, that's right. So recently, uh, CTA Research conducted a study that looked at both how educators and parents of children um, who have children in preschool through 12th grade are using technology in an educational sense. And we found that uh, both educators and parents agree that tech is allowing students anytime, anywhere access to education. And so it's really changing the way our kids are not just learning in these exponential leaps that technology can offer, but, and I'm speaking as a parent here of a, of, of a student, that uh, it is so, to some degree about the accessibility, right? That if you have that connectivity, regardless of device, you can get in touch with your class notes, the presentation in class itself, also your teacher and, and, and your classmates, right? That school and the interactions, at least education-wise, let alone social, those don't end at the end of class, right? You can get them anytime, anywhere. And it seems like all these stakeholders have a benefit there. Yeah, that's correct. And, you know, we find when we're looking at what types of technology parents and educators are using, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. And it's all about being able to access the content on the go. But it's also about the content. We found that the number one technology that parents are using is video content, in fact. So hmm. um, it's taking it past just the device itself, but actually what content they're using. So things like YouTube educational videos, they're using those at home, but also teachers are using them in the classroom as well. Uh, do you talk much about the devices that parents and teachers are using most frequently or find the most helpful? Yeah, and they're and they're pretty similar as well. So we're finding things like smartphones, tablets, mm-hmm. laptops being you know most prominent across both groups. Um, And we're also finding, you know, although we kind of think that these might be distractions in the classroom, we're actually finding that uh, two out of three, both parents and educators do not agree that having technology is a distraction to students. That's great. It's probably on a student by student basis, at least again, interjecting my own role as a parent and my own experience. Um, Let's go down that road a little bit, Leslie, with with the idea of of how um, parents, how teachers, how these educators view technology from a value proposition, right? The why, why have technology and why have it um, at, at a student's fingertips throughout the process? Right, so what we found is that nearly nine in 10 parents, around 86% surveyed, and four in five, around 79% of educators surveyed, agree that tech products are becoming a crucial part of classroom education at every level. More importantly, we're finding that seven in 10, or 71% of educators, and two in three, 67% of parents, indicate that STEM-specific products are important in encouraging student learning and education. And what's interesting there is that when we looked at educators, there isn't a difference uh, between those teachers that are teaching uh, STEM-specific courses versus non-STEM courses, we're finding that there's a blend of non-STEM uh, teachers also using these products in the classroom. Um, there's a there's a really interesting uh, product example I'd like to highlight. That's it's one of our CTA members. It's uh, the product's called Itty Bitty Buggy, and it teaches. <laughs> this is for kids. Name. Yeah, I assume. Name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they have all different types. There's even a sloth that you can create. <laughs> okay, I like uh, it. So it's it's very fun for children and also you know adults too. Mm-hmm. Um, but it teaches uh, children not only how to build the toy, but also the why or the logic behind each step from 
structure from structure to functionality. So basically it has the child build the product and then code various functions so the toy can add capabilities like remote control functions and voice control. So you see it from this uh, architectural building point of view all the way through the coding mm-hmm. and more technological focus. Yeah, great point there, Leslie, in that um, it seems like fewer and fewer STEM graduates, U.S. STEM graduates, are staying in that field. So part of the lifelong learning and lifelong love of learning process, it seems that the technology can enable that as well at those critical junctures. Um, you also look forward a lot in your job in terms of what's next, what's, what's to come. Any particular technology sectors, product sectors or categories is what I'm referring to, that have you excited as, uh, for their potential with, with education and technology? Uh, you mentioned the preponderance of smartphones and Honestly, that's the first place I turn when you know, my daughter has a question about, about school or work. Um, she also is quick to turn to her tablet, right? The, the access, the screen size, the type ability, right? Anything else come to mind for you that, that, that you see as having you know, either definite potential or something that you, you're thinking to yourself, hmm, this, this, could be, this could be important moving forward to education? I think the intersection of all of these technologies is really interesting. You know, you think about the smartphone and how far along it's come with Mm -hmm. being able to access content on the go, but also now we have voice integration within smartphones. So I think the blending of these technologies is really exciting. And, you know, we're finding that uh, even in the survey, we found that uh, educators and and teachers find that technology helps students develop technological skills for the future, regardless if it's, you know, in a STEM area or not. Mm -hmm. So I think, again, just the intersection of these technologies is really exciting. What do you see, huh, see the verb I'm using here, for AR, VR <laughs> moving forward, right? Yeah, either inside or outside the classroom, but the educational experience that where a textbook can, you know, th- that we would have read gives you a picture of the Galapagos Islands and maybe of a monitor lizard or the blue-footed booby. I'm, I'm going deep into my, <laughs> my, my Darwin history here. Um, VR could potentially take you to the islands and walk you around. Yeah, that's right. You know, AR, VR, the beauty of it is it's actually bringing these textbooks to life. Mm -hmm. So instead of just reading about a museum or, you know, a certain piece of artwork, you can actually visit it through virtual reality and see it in a life-size uh, you know, functionality, or you can use AR to overlay data in your everyday world. Mm-hmm. So you can be walking through that museum and you'll see certain uh, statistics pop up or certain pieces or nuggets of uh, history pop up as you're walking through the museum. Mm-hmm. What about the potential, and I'll say also importance of 5G technology? Um, because of the lightning fast connectivity we get, the download speeds, the interaction. Um, I assume that you see that as, as a platform for all that the potential that uh, education technology holds. Oh, absolutely. It's just bringing it to in faster speeds, lower latency, and you're just able to access so much more content and so much more data at a faster pace. Mm-hmm. I, personally, and this sounds you know, different, I, I'm sure this is a bit offbeat, but self-driving vehicles, that's what I think of a, as a high school student going back to my days. If I can save those, you know, even if it's 15 minutes each way to and from school, or I'm not driving, or I can focus on doing something like the last minute cramming before a test. Like I, I know that's that's not within the study, Leslie, as as traditional education technology. But there are all kinds of little incremental efficiency improvements we can make, right, through technologies moving forward. Yeah, that's right. And you know, self driving is 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 really interesting. You think about all the things you'll be able to do in the car or vehicle. Uh, since you won't be able to drive, but also thinking specifically about high school students and mm-hmm. parents' fear of their kids on the roads, I'm if there. you will. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a lot of safety features built into these vehicles that aren't in traditional cars. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, additionally, you'll be able to uh, maybe track your track your child <laughs> on the go <laughs> because it is a connected car. And monitor those speeds. Yes, That's I'm right. very much down with that. Um, one of the cool aspects of, of the research you consistently put together uh, at CTA, Leslie, is that um, yes, you have the data and it's crunched to make sense and paint a picture, but you also have often pretty firm takeaways, like the recommendations. Um, what are your main takeaways that you find coming out of this education technology study? So I think something that would be 
an ongoing uh, goal of most people would be establishing partnerships or even grant opportunities between tech companies and schools. Mm -hmm. Uh, We found that both parents and teachers agree that tech is becoming a crucial part of education at every level. So by establishing these partnerships um, or other agreements between the companies and schools, it's going to create new opportunities for children to get hands-on with these various technologies at younger ages. We found that uh, 58% of educators agree with the statement that they see value and incorporating technology in an everyday curriculum. However, they can't because of budget constraints. Mm, yeah, critical. Um, I'm going to call out your alma mater, which I can't imagine you mind because you are such a raging, proud, screaming Virginia Tech fan. Uh, yes. Yeah. Go Hokies. <laughs> uh, without getting into football prognostications for the coming year, um, Virginia Tech seems like a great example of these public-private partnerships, right? Where either through your esteemed fellow alums who go into the tech sector or some of the companies that have homes in the state of Virginia, uh, these partnerships really can make a difference for an educational system. First of all, I'm really excited to be a Virginia Tech Hokie and really excited for football season, too. Yeah, yeah. touche. Uh, Understood. It, it, tis the season, <laughs> they say. Um, but there are a lot of different partnerships that Virginia Tech is doing with the local communities as well as manufacturers. So, for example, um, right now, uh, undergraduate students are actually testing out drone delivery in real Mm -hmm. time in Blacksburg. Um, So things like uh, delivering your Chipotle to your dorm or to (laughs) your apartment, Um, they're testing out these uh, functionalities to be able to apply those in everyday situations. Mm -hmm. And additionally, taking that step further, when we think back to education, Um, A lot of people think that learning just stops right at when you graduate, but Virginia Tech just started a new mentorship program where um, those um, who have graduated from the school can also mentor undergraduate and graduate uh, students so they can be involved more in the tech sector or in any other ongoing education program. All right. Hokey, hokey, hi. Noted. Perfectly. Um, Back to the study, Leslie, one more question. That is the the potential gap between what kids do in the classroom with technology and what they're doing at home, because part of the benefit, and this is where we started this conversation, of connectivity is that you can access um, not just technology, but through technology, educational content anytime, anywhere. Um, What's the study's insight on that? Well, we found that 47% of parents report their children are using STEM-specific products at home for education and learning, while 62%, so quite a bit more, of educators are using these same STEM-specific products in the classroom. So if children are exposed to STEM products both inside and outside the classroom, it's going to strengthen their engagement and familiarity with the products and will more deeply ingrain the lessons learned from the products themselves. Yeah, I get the feeling this is the first of many conversations about technology and education we'll have. Leslie Rohrbaugh is Director of Research at the Consumer Technology Association. Leslie, always a blast. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, coming up next time on CES Tech Talk. Come on, you hear us say it all the time. Every company today is or needs to be a tech company, right? Well, we are talking with a company, you know this name, about digital health. And this is an insurance slash wellness company that is very much getting into the technology space and is banking on essentially one key emerging technology. If you were to ask me what is my number one priority, how about AI, 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 so artificial (laughs) intelligence. All right, that is coming up on the next edition of CES Tech Talk. Now, we are here to help you get CES ready, so do yourself a favor. If you haven't already, subscribe to this podcast. That way you won't miss a single episode as we're gearing up for the big show in January. Speaking of, CES 2020 is January 7th through the 10th in Las Vegas. The information you need is at ces.tech. Now, none of this is even remotely possible without the true stars of this podcast, executive producer Tina Anthony and senior studio engineer John Lindsay. You two are the very best in the business. I'm Tyler Suters. Let's talk tech again soon.